So let's bring in our panel for some reaction. Ian Pryor is the Communications Director for American Crossroads. And Mark Levine is a radio show host and a member of the Virginia House of Delegates. Both of them have joined us on this program, and we're happy to have you both back. Ian, I want to start with you uh, because I think I can predict um, Mark's reaction to this. We just saw Molly's report about those WikiLeaks developments. I want to ask you, do you think folks are getting fatigued by this drip, drip, drip of information, or do you think this is relevant and voters, especially those who haven't made up their minds, are really listening to what we're learning? Well, you know, I do think it's relevant, but I think here's ultimately the problem. Donald Trump needed to make this election about Hillary Clinton from the very beginning. And he really hasn't been able to do that over the past three weeks, and Hillary Clinton has really been able to make it about Donald Trump. So the problem is, for Trump, is that all the focus is on him right now. So when you get these WikiLeaks, when you get this drip of information, it's really not feeding into the narrative that the media is talking about, which is Donald Trump. So unless there's going to be some big bombshell that specifically links Hillary Clinton with either an email or latches on to her email controversy with the FBI, I think it's going to continue to get buried, and it's not going to have the, the kind of impact that I think it maybe should. But, you know, I want to expand on that a little bit, and I want to I want to bring in Mark, because on some of the issues that we see with Donald Trump, the Clinton campaign is actually fairly silent. You know, they're not necessarily capitalizing on it. Is that a strategy? I think it is. I think when your opponent is uh, putting himself on fire and dousing himself with gasoline, you let it happen. I mean, Donald Trump, in his last 100 days, is now saying he's going to sue the 11 women that have come forward with documented you know, evidence that, that, that he sexually assaulted them. He's putting the focus on them. That's not a smart strategy, and I think that's something Republicans and Democrats agree on. So if, if Donald Trump is ruining his own campaign, I think it's smart of Hillary to stay back. Okay, but and I want to continue with you, Mark. We see her focusing on down-ballot races. We also see her focusing in states such as Arizona. That, all, that, that sort of gives us maybe um, a, a, that she's feeling fairly confident. Should she be feeling so confident right now? Well, the polls do show her ahead, and certainly no time in American history has anyone come back from this far. But the down-ballot races matter. Who controls the Senate matters. So I think she's very smart to focus on that. Anything can happen. There's no reason to be complacent. It's interesting. Donald Trump is saying the election's rigged, so I guess he's telling his supporters, you know, don't bother to vote. You can't win anyway. But on the Democratic side, we're definitely pulling out and, and pushing everyone we can to vote. Okay. Well, you talked about her being ahead in polls. I, I want to shift gears and bring Ian in, because we have heard the the thought that perhaps some of Donald Trump voters, you know, they're not getting polled, they're silent voters, they're not getting represented, and that we're all going to be surprised on November 8th when, when all said is, said, is done, said is said and done and he ends up winning. Is that something that you think is a possibility, Ian? Well, look, I think anything is possible at this point. I think if you look at the swing states, you know, not the national polls, but the, the states that Trump needs to win, Ohio, Florida, North Carolina, Nevada, these are close races. This isn't an eight-point race. This isn't a nine-point race. We're talking about two, three points. And in some places, like Ohio, Trump may even have the lead. So, you know, I do think that we have to look and see at the intensity of the Trump voters. How are they going to come out on Election Day? You know, are they going to be more enthusiastic than the Clinton voters? And going to the down ballot stuff, I think it's interesting that Hillary Clinton is going out there campaigning for these, these Senate candidates. You know, over 33 percent of the people supporting Hillary Clinton are doing it while holding their nose. Having a check and balance on Hillary Clinton down ballot is something that a lot of these voters are going to want. So by going out there and linking herself to some of these Democratic Senate candidates, it may backfire on them. Well, when you look at the favorability ratings, it may be fair to say that, that on both sides of the aisle we have people holding their noses. I do want to ask you one more question. You brought up those battlegrounds states, does he have a ground game to close that gap? We're only seeing 16 days left. Well, you know, I think that's the big question. That's very difficult to assess two weeks out. I think we know what the Clinton machine is going to do. They're going to have a ground game. They're a traditional campaign. They have the aid of the DNC. We know that. I think that's the big unknown in this race. Are Donald Trump voters going to show up? Does he have the ground game? Because if he has the ground game, that could make the difference in a one-point, two-point race. If he doesn't, you know, he could end up on the losing end of some close, some close races in the okay. battleground states. I'm getting, I'm getting the time cue. Mark, if you can, if you you can respond in 15 seconds Just or less. Just real quick, I was out canvassing for Hillary yesterday in Virginia. Uh, definitely the grand game matters, and I encourage all Democrats to help out. All right, wish we had more time. Mark and Ian, thank you so much. Really interesting. 16 days left. Thank you. Thanks. More than five.